We're now proceeding with examination of the back. Obviously, one of the important parts of the examination, as you do any part of the examination, is first inspection of the skin, which is obviously done as you evaluate any particular part of the body. After you've evaluated and inspected the skin, we now want to go proceed with examination of the back. First, we want to determine whether or not there's any tenderness along the, the vertebral column. Mr. Johnson, is there any tenderness here? No. Any tenderness here? No. Any tenderness here? No. Here? No. What about over here? Any tenderness here? No. Okay, what about here? No. Or here? No. Okay, any tenderness down here? No. And as I move down your spine, any tenderness here? No. Here? No. Down here? No. Or what about here? No. Notice I stopped over here. This was evaluation of costal vertebral angle tenderness. CVA tenderness, which is seen in patients who have kidney disorders. Down over here, evaluation of the sacroiliac areas is very important to rule in or out sacroiliitis, which can be associated with many conditions. We're now going to evaluate posterior chest excursion. In order to do that, we place our hands and fanning the fingers out along the intercostal space, bringing our hands in in this fashion, and then asking the patient to take a deep breath and watch what happens to the fingers as the chest expands. Take a deep breath. Out. Again. The symmetric excursion of your hands is indicative of symmetric chest excursion. After we've done palpation of the back, we want to proceed with tactile fremitus. By placing the heel of your hand in an interspace and moving from side to side, you will evaluate the note that which is determined from the, the patient's spoken voice. Uh, Mr. Johnson, can you say 99? 99. 99? 99. 99? 99. And 99? 99. 99? 99. 99? 99? What we're determining now is we're making sure that the tactile fremitus note is equal on each side. Please note that I went from one side to another to try to determine whether symmetry was present or not present. It could either be done here to here, then here to here, here to here, or, as I did it, here to here, drop down, here to here, drop down, here to here. It must never be in from here, 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 and then on this side. Also, never examine a patient through a gown. The next part of the examination is percussion of the chest. Percussion is a very important technique which is done by applying one finger to the patient's skin and the other hand with a very sharp wrist motion taps the other finger. There are four basic types of percussion notes. First is timpani, second is resonance, third is dullness, and the fourth is flatness. Typically, over the lung fields, one hears resonance. Typically, over a cavity which contains a lot of air, one hears tympany. When one percusses over the liver, a large parenchymal mass, we hear generally dullness. And when one percusses over a large muscle mass, we hear generally flatness. Just as we did with the palpation, we go from side to side, evaluating whether or not symmetry is present. We always do this in interspaces as well, never on the ribs. And the final part of evaluation of the back is auscultation. And again, we do auscultation in about the same six or seven different areas on the back using the diaphragm applied firmly to the chest wall. If the patient happens to have a very hairy back or a hairy chest, make sure that the diaphragm is applied firmly to the chest wall uh, because otherwise, as they breathe, there are extra sounds which are heard which might be uh, mistaken for other pathological processes. It's generally nice to warm the stethoscope before you apply it to the patient's uh, body because it, after all, is rather cold compared to the patient's skin temperature. Mr. Johnson, I'm going to ask you to open your mouth and take some nice big breaths in and out through your mouth. Okay? 
Big breath in. Again. 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 Good. And just breathe normally. Notice again that we went from side to side and that we listen in a complete respiratory cycle, inspiration and expiration in each of the areas evaluated. We now want to evaluate the apices of the lungs of the upper lobe, and this is usually best done in the supraclavicular fossa and in the axilla. So I'm going to ask Mr. Johnson to just turn around a little bit this way. And keep your arms up and say 99. 99. 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 99 and percussion and keep your arms up good you put your arms down evaluation in the axilla and in the supraclavicular fossa are the areas which are best for evaluation of the upper lobes of the lung. I'm going to ask you to take a nice big breath in and out, again, out, and can you just bring your arms up for me, and in and out, again, out, again, again, Good, and breathe normally.